Good morning, church. Let's all begin this service with prayer. Father, we want to thank you this day. Thank you for bringing us into this presence. Thank you for bringing us into this new year. Lord, as we come, we surrender this entire service into your hands. Holy Spirit of God, we welcome you and we pray you will take control of every session. And we pray, O oh Lord, that we will be blessed with your presence this day. And we will be blessed with your word this day, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we all turn our Bibles to Psalms 113? And we will read verses 1 to 5. This is what it says. We all got there. Psalms 113. Okay. It says, Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is exalted over all the nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, the one who sits enthroned on high? So when I was reading this today, you know, it teaches us one thing, you know, to keep praising God. And I think even if we have stepped into this new year, to the first Sunday we are all here, the one reason we all have is to praise God, right? Because many people never made it true. We have all made it true. And, you know, praising God is also like thanking God. And what it is, it just shows God we are grateful to Him that we have made it. So, you know, the one thing that we should never get, not only this new year, but every new year, is to continue praising God. And even as we have come into His presence today, you know, we should remember that and we should praise Him for all the good things He has done and through all the difficult paths He has brought us through. And, you know, one thing, if, if sometimes, you know, we search for reasons. What do we say? And praise God. Before I go into verse 1, you know, verse 4 says, The Lord is exalted over all the nations. So it talks about God. His glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, the one who sits enthroned on high. So this day we come here to praise a God who is the most high God. There is nobody else like him. Is there anybody else like our God? No. And if we want to seek a reason to praise, you know, in verse 1 it says, praise the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we always say there is healing, there is victory. You know, when you call upon the name, is there anything, you, you know, that God cannot do? So there are so many reasons to, today, you know, that we have. So church, I heard you today, even as we come today, you know, as we begin to praise the name of the Lord, you know, let's not be silent. Let's forget about everything, you know, no matter what the future holds for us. Let's continue praising God. Let's come with an attitude of gratitude to praise God this day so that when we praise his name, let his glory that is high above the heaven even fill this church today as we call upon the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So let's all join together and praise the name of God. Good morning, church. Can we all get, up, get on our feet and prepare our hearts to worship the Lord? Like Croy said, that, that particular verse rung out to me um, as he was reading that psalm. It says, let the name of the Lord be praised both now and forevermore. And there was also another psalm that I was uh, meditating on, Psalm 150. And it says, um, praise the Lord in the heavens and praise the Lord in the sanctuary. So it's not just in the sanctuary that we're going to praise the Lord. There's right now praises and worship being lifted up in heaven. And we're just going to get a bit of a glimpse of what's going on in heaven and right now I just hope you're as excited I know we're all tired right I'm very tired um, but I'm just excited to get a glimpse of heaven are you excited church amen let's sing this song at the name at the name of Jesus everything will bow let's put our hands together let's wake up let's rise up 
and declare his praises this morning church shake and crumble at your name the oceans roar and tumble at your name angels will bow at your name angels will bow the earth will rejoice your people see now sings your story at your name angels will bow at your name angels will bow the earth will rejoice your people cry out cry out sit down Lord of all the earth we shout your name shout your name filling up the skies with Praise, endless praise, Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord, Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, sing it out, Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise, Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name. church but just to declare your name oh God to declare the works of your hands oh father God as the word says the heavens declare the glory of God and the skies declare the work of his hands do you believe that this morning if you were able to wake up and see the bright skies it's 
it's because he was so good to give us a good weather to come here this morning to worship him. Can you just praise the Lord with me as we sing this song? My Jesus, my Savior, there is no one like you. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my comfort, my shelter. My shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, all that I am, never cease to worship. You sing with me, shout to the Lord, all the earth. Let us sing, let His people sing. be your prayer that you want to praise him in every circumstance in every situation my comfort my shelter tower of refuge and strength let every breath in me all that I am never see may fail oh God everything else may fade away oh Father God but Lord you remain forever you are constant your word remains forever oh Father God Lord Jesus no matter what the situation is you have never failed us oh Father God even this year Lord when the previous year 2021 some of us have had such a difficult year it's not been easy on us, but Lord, you have strengthened us, oh God. As the psalmist said, when I called you in my day of trouble, you heard me. Jesus, we just thank you. We thank you and we declare that not for a moment have you failed us, oh God. Not for a moment have you failed us, but you have strengthened us. You have strengthened us. Let's do the song. You were reaching through the 
storm Walking on the water Even when I could not see In the middle of it all When I thought you were a thousand miles away Not for a moment Did you forsake me Not for a moment Did you forsake me And after all You are constant After Whispering your promise Even when I could not hear I was held in your arms Carried for a thousand miles to show Not for a moment Did you forsake me Not for a moment Did you forsake me after all you can't say And after all, you are constant. And after all, you are only good. And after all, you are sovereign. Not for a moment will you forsake me. Not for a And every step, every breath you are there, every tear, every cry, every breath. In my heart, at my words, when my world falls down, not for a moment will you forsake me, not for a moment. remind ourselves of that this morning church that how faithful our God has been how faithful he has been in our lives this past year and how he will continue to hold our hands as we enter this new year Lord help us this morning to just lay everything oh God before you only your name oh God is deserving of praise only the name of Jesus deserves all honor, all glory. Let our hearts worship you, O God. Whatever we are burdened with, O God, 
whatever is feeling like chains around our, our legs, oh God, just break it, Lord. We will not be the same, oh God. We will rise victorious with our Lord. Let's just declare this morning that He deserves the glory. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the As we lift your holy name, for you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you, for you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one like you there is no one else like you yes oh God sing to him this morning you deserve the glory yes you do God and the honor Lord we We lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you, there is no one else, oh God, no one else more deserving, oh God. We pour out our hearts before you, O oh God. We pour out our lives before you, O oh God. You take control, O oh God. Take control, O oh God, of our arms, of our legs, of our eyes, of our mouths, of our tongues, O oh God. We lay it upon your altar, O oh God. Use us mightily, O oh God, in this new year. Enough of the backsliding, O oh God. Enough of just standing in the same place year after year after year, oh God. We want to walk forward, oh God. We want to win victories, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And as we continue, oh God, to serve you, let us continue to just stand in awe, oh God. 
in all of your presence, oh God. Just worship you, Lord. You are beautiful beyond description. Too marvelous for us, too wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your? The depths of your love You are beautiful beyond description Oh majesty and throne above And I stand, I stand in awe of you God, I stand
lead us down straight paths, oh God. Help us keep our eyes just fixed on you, Lord, this year. We hope, oh God, that this time was pleasing you, Lord. That the praises of our hearts were an aroma so great to you, oh God. We just want to continue to worship your name in this place, Jesus. Just ask all this in your most precious name. Amen. So let us pray and then we will move on to the word. Father, we want to thank you for being such a good God to us. Lord, we thank you for the testimonies. For We thank you for the assurance that you have given to us once more, God. To each and every one of us that you are there for us, oh God. In difficult times, you stand by us. You guide us. You lead us. You never put us to shame. We thank you, Father, O oh Lord, for your wonderful grace in our life, O oh Lord. Even this day, as we come to listen to your word, we pray you bless your servant, you anoint him, you speak through him, O oh Lord Jesus, to us, O oh God, as we long to listen to thy word, O oh Lord, which is a lamp unto our feet, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning and greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus. And, uh, Welcome to the first week of 2022. It's wonderful to be in God's presence. And uh, I've titled my message as um, Letting God Lead Us. Letting God Lead Us. And let's read from Exodus chapter 32 verse 1. Exodus chapter 32 verse 1. Now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said to him, Get up, make us gods who will go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us out of Egypt, we do not know what's become of him. It said, make us gods who will go before us or who will lead us. Um, there's a word in Greek which is very often used uh, in the Bible, in the context in which we understand from. It's called theophany. The word theo is God, phony is form. Uh, it means that, you know, God appearing in a sensible, uh, a tangible form where you can identify and know it is God. That's what theophany is all about. So you, you have a divine visitation of God and it is very real. It's not some uh, disembodied form or, or some bizarre appearance. You know, you can't make out who it is. But it is a very, very clear, um, you know, form, a very sensible form. You know, where you know it is really God. And so when God appeared uh, to people in the Old Testament, when you read about God appeared to Abraham, it's a theophany. It means God appeared as a man. God appeared in a real form. They knew that they were seeing God. They knew that they were talking to God. When God appeared to uh, Jacob, uh, uh, when God appeared to uh, Moses, or, or when, when he appeared to all those uh, uh, saints in the Old Testament, which we read over and over again, they all had this uh, divine visitation of God. It's a theophany. It's God appearing, you know, in a human form that you know for sure that this is God. It's absolutely without a shadow of doubt, right? So what we have read in this story is theophany at Sinai, right? Where God appeared in a form that people saw really it was God. People knew it was God. It was real. It was a real experience for them. Right? And it is very clearly described in Exodus chapter um, 19. You read through those chapters, you will find in verse 6, very specifically, where God descended on Mount Sinai, you know, like a fire. The Bible says there was smoke in Mount Sinai, right? And uh, it was a smoke like a furnace. I'm sure you can imagine how a uh, smoke would come out of a furnace it was like that and there was rumblings and there was thunders and the sound of trumpets and um, and the whole mountain quaked 
And then God descended and people saw and they heard the audible voice of God. And the Bible says to such extent that even Moses said, I trembled at the presence of God. So it was theophany at Sinai. So people saw God. They saw the real, sensible, tangible, rational appearance of God. And they heard the voice of God. And God spoke to them very clearly. Right? So it was such a dramatic, powerful powerful experience which people had it was theophany at sinai right so i was i'm reading a book uh, presently it's written by joel richardson and the title of this book is uh, mount sinai the true location revealed and he says it's not somewhere in the sinai peninsula you know where most of the traditional view is about but it's somewhere in arabia saudi arabia which uh, which I also believe, you know, it's Saudi Arabia. So he, he's taken up a lot of explorations and uh, trying to explore the whole region. Many people have done it. And uh, he talks about how his team had gone there and they have visited, uh, you know, Sinai. And you go there in this, in, this, in this small town, you know, in the southern part of Arabia. And you talk to those locals there who lived for generations together. They ask, you ask them, what mountain is this? They will say, it's the uh, Mount of Musa. You know, it's uh, Moses' mountain. Right. So, so, and he says how they climbed the mountain as a team. They're trying to explore how this mountain is. And, this, and he said, we can see those, uh, you know, those charred mountain peaks, you know, the smoky tissue all over those mountain peaks, which is charred by those, uh, you know, fire, you know, and the smoke. You can very visibly see that. And as you come to the foothills of the mountain, you have these, uh, you know, these graveyards, you know, it's hundreds, thousands of graveyards uh, uh, probably could be those 3,000 people who died when they worshipped the golden calf and some of the archaeologists have actually found out there is a huge rock it's a huge rock that is split right in the middle you know, split into two and they call it as the rock of Moses you know it's all real what happened at Sinai the theophany at Sinai was real people saw God people had the experience of having a visitation from God they heard the voice of God it was all real, right? And having such a, you know, dramatic and a powerful, you know, a compelling experience of, of having a visitation from God. I mean, you read this, this doesn't make any sense, right? Make us gods who will go before us, who will lead us. It beats you, you know, it kind of boggles your mind. How can somebody have such a powerful experience of God, a real experience of God, knowing that this is really God and having heard the real voice of God, you know, and how can you ignore such, such powerful experiences in your life, uh, you know, and then just go back and say, oh, make us gods who will lead us. How could this be possible? Probably you and I in that place would say, we would never have, would have done that, right? Because having such a powerful encounter you know, of God to dramatically change your life thereafter. Right? But make no mistake, it's, it's pretty common, right? I'll tell you, it's, it's pretty common. What is happening here is, is, is very normal, right? Let's leave alone the fact, the golden calf, you know, factor. You know, that's what probably disturbs us, gods. You know, the gods, how can you go after gods? But, but let's try to understand what is the sense, you know, what is the... The, the, the underlying fact in this whole passage, right? Make us gods who will go before us. Make some gods. It doesn't matter. Make something for us. We are not very specific about this god. Make some gods. But the point is, we want to go. We want somebody to lead us forward. We want somebody to, to take us forward. We want to go. Moses is dead. We have been waiting for him. Moses is dead. So... We don't have a leader to lead us. So make some gods for us, but we want somebody to take us from this place. We want to go forward. We want to head to the promised land. All those promises that you have been talking to us about. We don't want to be in this desert for too long. We've already had a tiring journey of three months traveling from Egypt. You promised us that God is going to take us to a land flowing with milk. And take us there soon. Make any gods you want, but take us. We want to go forward. Let this God lead us forward. That's the point. So what the people seeing here is that it's nothing strange. They say we want somebody to lead us where God has promised. 
There is a tendency to go ahead of God. There is a tendency to miss God in the pursuit of our blessings, in the pursuit of the promise. Let's say for example, we have all entered 2022 with great expectation, right? I've entered 2022 with a lot of excitement, with so much of expectation. We have all great expectations. We are, we are hoping that God should do something for us in 2022, which probably he hadn't done in 2021. Right? That's why there's so much of expectation. That's why there's so much of excitement about this new year. We are hoping, we are hinging onto God's promise. We're saying, Lord, maybe 2021 has been a, you know, a difficult year. It's been a drab. It's been a, a kind of, a, you know, a, 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 a struggle. You know, we have probably felt stagnated in our life. So I'm coming to you in 2022 with so much of hope, with so much of anticipation, with so much of excitement. You know, uh, I'm believing that 2022 is going to be Something great, right? So you're entering 2022 with a much greater expectation than you live 2021. Right? Maybe it's your job, right? You've been expecting a breakthrough, a promotion, you know, something to change in your job in 2021. And now you're in 2022 with much greater expectation, right? With much greater expectation. You know, hope, with much greater hope that something is going to happen in this new year, which God didn't do for me in 2021. It could be something, there's something very personal, you know, it could be something, you know, about your family or some kind of a change or circumstantial change that you're looking for. You know, you're expecting something new to happen, which you expected to happen in 2021 and now in 2022. Lord, I want something new to happen, right? Maybe you've gone through humiliation and, uh, you know, a you know, bit of a, uh, you know, uh, a depression. It's been a very sober year. And you want God to vindicate you. You want God to turn things around for you in 2022, right? So what happens when these expectations become elusive? When you're expecting something to happen and it just goes out of your hand. It's not in your grasp. So what happens? You get back to survival mode, right? All the ex excitement of that New Year service, all the ex excitement of that, you know, starting the year with such great hope, just dissipates into thin air. You're back to your rut. You're back to your survival mode. And then you begin to have this, you know, this sense of dissatisfaction and discontentment. When it's going to happen? When, God, are you going to change my circumstance, right? That is when, that is when precisely what happens is we miss the presence of God. We miss what God is trying to do presently in our life. What is God doing? His presence. His presence means he is present with us now. When you say his presence, Lord, I need your presence means he is present now. We want him now, real, tangible, in our midst, right now, in my present circumstance. And I want you to lead me now. Most often what happens is that we try to look to the future. We try to have those expectations. Then all of a sudden when things get stuck up, we, we miss. So there is a tendency for God's people to miss God's presence. In pursuit, when we blindly pursue His promises, those expectations. There's a problem, there's a pattern right through the life of the people of Israel. Why are you not taking us to, to Canaan? You know, why are we stuck here in this desert? You know, where is that you promised? Why are we eating these, uh, you know, this manna, this colorless, odorless, insipid, tasteless food manna? You know, where is this land flowing with milk? How long are we going to wait? So there is a building up frustration, you know, as it begins to build up. Begin to miss God and they want to move. We want to go. Let somebody lead us. We want to go forward. We want to get to the place where God has promised us. That's, that's the problem here. But I want to tell you, people of God, it's the presence that precedes the promise of God. Always remember, always remember, the first priority in your life is that God, I want you now present.
in my present, in my life. I want your presence to lead me and guide me, to teach me. I want you now. It's the presence of God that takes you to the promise, that takes you to the blessings, that helps you fulfill all your expectations, your dreams, your ambitions, your joy. It is the presence of God. That's why in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, God said, Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Make no mistake. Sometimes we think when all these things are there, then God's presence is there. No. We sometimes think because I miss those important legitimate things in my life, these are so important to me because it influences my, my very life. It influences my joy. When joy is affected, my peace is affected. You know, the things that I need is still missing. So all these things, when all these things comes to me, that is the guarantee that God is there in my life. His presence is there. No. Dambanis have everything. They don't have God. There's so many people out there who have all these things. The Bible says that seek ye first the kingdom of God. But it's God's presence comes as a priority in your life. And then all those promises just get added out to you. That's what the Bible says. So, point is, God should be with us. Right? God was with Joseph. The Bible keeps on repeating, right? God was with Joseph. God was with David. All those circumstances were not easy circumstances when they are talking about when God was with Joseph in the prison. So, what I'm trying to build on this morning is that it's the presence of God that proceeds. The promise of God. That's the mistake. That as God's people, we get ourselves into this problem where we miss the presence of God in our lives. The two reasons, you know, I read from this story, I can find two reasons why, why we can inadvertently, carelessly, we can slightly get ahead of God. There's one reason is it's it's pretty common. We can read that from Exodus chapter 32. It's there in verse 1. Now, when the people saw Moses delayed, delay, very frustrating. Now, the people are not in any, you know, in a kind of a mindset. They're waiting for Moses to just disappear and just make a golden calf, right? It's not that they're all waiting. They're so sentimentally attached to this golden calf, which they worshipped in Egypt. They're waiting for an opportunity to just make a golden calf as soon as Moses disappears. So Moses is gone. Let's make a calf. That's not what the story says. The Bible says Moses delayed. They've been waiting for Moses for 40 days, 40 nights. It's been a long time. Moses had gone. It's been delayed for a long time. We just can't be sitting like we've got to do something about this. Moses is gone. They waited and waited and waited. And because it was a delay, an agonizing wait is making them to move ahead of God. It's an agonizing wait. Delays, I tell you, it's so frustrating, right? We get sometimes we miss God by a whisker. We miss God's timing like that. We miss God's, you know, divine visitations like that. When God wanted to do something, we somehow, we prematurely, we try to do things and, and muck up the whole, and then God has to restart the whole process again. Because we are very frustrated. All of us go through frustrations when things get delayed. The rabbis have a very, you know, I, you know they have an amazing understanding of the Old Testament scriptures. You know, I've, uh, I've had these courses, sat with these rabbis, and I've listened to him. I mean, they know the scriptures by heart. Because I think when a day when they go through these, uh, you know, these uh, Yeshiva trainings, I think 17 hours, they just read the scriptures. They just meditate and memorize. They know the Bible from cover to cover. And they can give you the dates, the timings. And, and so insightful sometimes when you listen to what they are saying. And uh, the rabbis, the, the Jewish scholars say, you know, the... The, the golden calf was made on the 
39th day. And Moses came down from the mountain on the 40th day. So in the, according to the Jewish calendar, it was the 16th day of the month of Tammuz. Tammuz is uh, the month of June and July, according to the uh, English calendar. So it was on the 16th day of the month of Tammuz in the afternoon. They set up the golden calf on the 17th day morning. Moses came. And some, somewhere they miscalculated. You know, they knew that Moses is going to come back in 40 days. That's what they say. It's not there in the scriptures. But somehow they miscalculated because they did not count the first day. And they become so impatient. On the 16th day on the month of Tammuz in the afternoon, they set up the golden calf. And then Moses shows up on 17th day. Sometimes you miss God by a whisker. Just like that. That's how circumstances come into our life. That's how sometimes even the devil has sometimes tried to frustrate us and, and make us to a place, bring us to a place where we, where we feel that God is not moving, then we have to move something and make it happen. Re always remember, when there is a delay, remember God is at work. God is working something. That's what's happening in the Mount Sinai. The most spiritually uplifting experience for a whole nation. God is giving his laws, Torah, the laws of God, inscribed by the hand of God. The Bible says it was written by God. Where have you read or experienced something like that in the history of mankind? God is writing the laws that will rule mankind. It is going to define the relationship between people and God and it's going to redefine their purpose in life. There's something that's happening up on the mountain and your people have missed the whole point. Right? So always remember when there are delays in your life and God is delaying things, when you feel like things are not moving, always remember God is at work. He's still working. Amen? He's still working. Maybe we are not able to see behind the scenes what's going on. But always remember God is working something which is going to be spiritually uplifting in your life. Which is going to transform your life. Because he's most concerned about assuring his presence and bringing you to a place where you know that you have God. Rather than just going ahead and just doing things and, and making yourself happy about you know that you have something in your hand. That's what's going on here. You read the story. That's how the story unravels. God is always at work in our lives. Delays can be very frustrating at times. You know, uh, I was about to go to US November 2020. November 2020 is what we plan to go to US. Ajit told me we can come in. I can come and experience winter there, Christmas. So... But the COVID outbreak and uh, the plans had to be changed. So we pushed it to August 2021. So I booked my tickets August 2021 to September, 20, you know, to the end of September. So, so, and then again, there was another COVID outbreak. And then I pushed my tickets now, you know, and uh, it was going to go through a hassle because the Lufthansa said you can have a one year you know, time period to reschedule. All the flights were cancelled. Nothing was going. So, so worked through and Janet only helped me finally because I couldn't speak to those guys in Hindi. They were being so impatient. I can't even explain to them. So, so we rescheduled the flight and uh, now it's April to May 2022. Right? Imagine I, I have a return flight ticket fully paid. I've been holding this ticket for more than a year and I can't go to US. I mean, unless it is God's time, nothing will work in your life. You understand that? Unless it is God's time, He moves nothing. So frustrating sometimes. But you believe that some good is coming. And in between what happened, Prince has gone to Germany. And it so happened the Lufthansa is, you know, my stop is in Frankfurt. And uh, it is only much later, you know, after I booked my tickets, I told Prince, it so happened, now you are in, you know, the Prince said, no, no, you have to come to Germany. So now he has done something, he's, he's made my stop in Germany for a, for a week, for nine days, okay. And then two days back, three days back, I was talking to my friend in, in um, Connecticut. So I was casually telling, I have this ticket now for two years, I've been waiting, you know, I'm going to come there. 
I hopefully, I think I'll come there in April. He said, you're coming to the U.S.? I mean, you have to come and visit me in Connecticut. I said, uh, yeah, it'll be nice. No, it'll not be nice and all. You're coming and I'll take care of everything. Yeah, I want you to come there and be with me. New York is very close. You know, we'll just go around. You know, just don't worry about anything. We'll make sure you come. Oh, sounds very nice. Isn't it? Isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. There's an Omicron that's already come. Everything is closing down. I don't know how many, just to make one trip, three years. I, I'll tell you, God is in this all. God is in this all. So I'm not very disappointed because I'm very clear if there is a purpose, you know, and if it is God's will, and if he's delaying it, He's working out something better for me. Maybe another two more stops are going to be added. That's all. But somehow it's going to happen. It will happen in God's time. You know. That's how frustrating life can get. But all the time you need to make sure that I'm, I'm just want to be there in God's presence. Led by God. I'm not going to go ahead of God's timing. I'm not going to go ahead of God's timing. Because what is more important in my life is that I'm led by his presence. I'm sure he's working out something so beautiful even as I'm waiting. The next problem the next problem is free choice. The children of Israel has been in bondage in slavery for 400 years 16 generations together they have been in slavery they've cried out to God they prayed to God you know they have been in hard bondage bitter bondage you know and their lives were, were so bitter. And they've been praying and crying and seeking. For 16 generations together, 400 years, they have been waiting patiently for God's deliverance. And now they couldn't wait for 40 days. Why? They are free now. We are a free people. We have the freedom to think. We have the freedom to act. We have the freedom to decide when you have the freedom to think, act, and decide, you make free choices. The greatest pitfall, human pitfall, is that God has given us free choices to make. That's what is happening there. Make us gods. It's our choice. We are a majority here. Where is Moses? Is not there. I think he's dead and gone. Aaron can't do. He's a single man. Just imagine the whole congregation rising up against it. We need somebody to lead us. It's a free choice. We have the freedom to decide. And you make, you have the freedom to make free choices. Remember, God doesn't interfere in your free choices. He doesn't interfere. God wants you to make those right choices. That he is 100% sure. But when you make those wrong choices, when I make those wrong choices, when I make those bad decisions, he's not going to interfere. You might ask why. That's how God is. That's how God is. He could have stopped Adam and Eve. He never, that's where the whole story begins. Right from Genesis. He never interfered in their free choices. He never created man as a remote controlled robo. He gave him all the free choices and said, make your own decisions. I've told you enough what is right and wrong. He never interfered in Cain. He said, be careful. Sin is waiting at your doorstep. He went ahead and killed his own brother. God never interfered. And then when the consequences come, he comes and shows up. And I tell you, why Lord, why don't you just come a little ahead of time and stop us from making those mistakes? I wouldn't. No, it's not fair. You shouldn't be like that. But well, that's how I am. That's my nature. I wouldn't interfere in your free choices. Why God wouldn't have, God should have stopped the people from, you know, from building this golden ark. Why didn't you stop them? He waited for them and then he comes, he shows up. All those free choices, those bad decisions, the things that we sometimes do without consulting with God, without waiting for God, without listening to God, without taking the time to keep God in our scheme of things, without sincerely seeking God, without that when sometimes we make those decisions come back to haunt us. I've done a lot of mistakes like that. I'm sure we all make mistakes like that. And that's why we need the presence of God. There's something that's going to lead us into this year 2020. It's the presence of God. It's God. Without God, I'm not going to take a step forward. 
16th of the month of Tammuz, the afternoon they made the golden calf. The Jewish history says that you know, it came back to haunt them. It, it's one of the worst horrendous sin that the people of Israel committed. It happened right at the foothills of Sinai, the very same place where they had the theophany, the very same place. Where they had the encounter with God. The very same place where they saw God. They heard the voice of God. God came down to them. On the very place they disgraced God. It came back to haunt them. They say on the very 16th month of Tammuz. You know, history repeats itself. The Babylonians came and destroyed the walls of Jerusalem. You read that much later. right? It happened on the 16th month of Tammuz. The Romans came and destroyed the temple of Jerusalem. It happened on the 16th month of Tammuz. So you find that, that all those bad decisions where people have done without consulting God, without honoring the presence of God in their midst, without honoring the presence of God in our lives, sometimes it comes back to haunt us. So what God is telling us, God is telling us that we need to prioritize His presence. Don't keep God out of it. <clears throat> Don't keep God out of it. People chose. It's their free will choice. They said we will make gods who will lead us. We want to go ahead. We want God to give us this promised land. This is what you have promised. We hold you accountable for what you have promised. Don't we do that sometimes? Did we hold God accountable for what? And we think it's faith and we express it so powerfully. for Bagamit. You have to do it because you said it. We hold God at ransom because he said something. That's God is just trying to test our hearts to see, do you want what I have said or do you want me? That's what it all boils down to at the end of our lives. People made their choice. They said, we want to go ahead. Make us God. Make us gods. We want to go ahead. But Moses has made his choice. Moses has made his choice. He said, I want his presence. That's what Moses said. Let's read that. Let's read that. I want you to read this carefully because there's something that I'm going to pick up from this. It's very important for us to understand the scripture. There are a few verses. I want your full concentration as we go through these verses. This is Moses' choice, right? Let's read from Exodus chapter 33. Let's read Exodus chapter 33. Verses 15, Exodus chapter 33, verses 15. Thirty-three verses 15. But then Moses said to God, if your presence does not go with me, do not let us go up from here. For how would it be known that I or your people have found favor in your eyes? Isn't it because you go with us? This is what distinguishes us from all the people on the face of the earth. It's your presence that distinguishes us. Listen to these words carefully. Adonai answered Moses. God answered Moses. I will also do what you have asked for. For you have found favor in my sight. And I know you by name. God is saying, you have found favor, Moses. I will do it for you. Now listen to this. This is very interesting. Listen to this very carefully. So he said, I will cause all my goodness to pass before you. You are reading it? Are you listening to what I'm saying? He's saying, I will cause all my goodness to go before you. That's what it means. And call out on the name of Adonai before you. I will be gracious towards on whom I will be gracious. I will show mercy on whom I will be merciful. But he also said, you cannot see my face for no man can see me and live. Still listen. Then Adonai said, see a place near me. You will stand on that rock. 
while my glory passes by, it passes before you, it passes ahead of you, as I go before you, I will put you in a cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed you by. Then I will take away my hand and you will see my back, but my face you will not see. Moses is very determined here. He's made his choice. He said, Lord, unless your presence goes, I'm not getting out of this place. It doesn't matter if I have to stay in this scorching wilderness, no man's land. You know, if, it's, if, it's, if this is where you want to keep me, I will still be here. Unless your presence moves, I'm not going to move from here. He made his choice very clearly. And then God says, you have found favor with me. I will show you how I'm going to go before you. Because you made your choice, Moses. Because you decided that you want my presence. I'll show you. You cannot see me, my face. Because no man can see me. But I'll show you how I'm going to go before you. I will let all my goodness pass before you. Now see my back. I'm going ahead of you. I will let all my goodness pass before you. I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. I will show grace on whom I will show grace. And God passed before Moses. As he's going before Moses, he's proclaiming. He's proclaiming that he is a God who is full of mercy. You know that it happens in the next chapter. You know, go home and read that. In chapter 34, verse 6, it says, Then Adonai passed before him and proclaimed Adonai, Adonai, the compassionate, the gracious God, slow to anger, abundant in grace and mercy and loving kindness, who extends his grace and mercy to thousands of generations. You understand? Because you have chosen my presence, Moses, because you are so adamant, because you are so determined that you want my presence, now see, I will let all my goodness pass before you. I'm going ahead of you. And as God is going ahead of Moses, he proclaims himself, he proclaims his name. He says, here am I, the God of mercy, God of compassion, who forgives all your sins, who extends his mercy to thousands of generations. He let all his goodness pass before him. You understand? The promise succeeds the presence of God. If you choose God's presence in your life, then you let all his goodness pass before you. You will let all his goodness pass before you. That's why I told you it is the presence that precedes the promises of God. All the goodness that you need in your life is there in his presence. Is there with God. And when you make that decision in your life that I'm going to seek God no matter what goes on in my life. I'm not going to allow these frustrating delays or these free choices in my life to anyway hinder my, my commitment and my devotion, my time with God. I'm going to seek God for who He is. And then He takes hold of you. And then He leads you forward. And when He goes ahead of you, He'll let all His goodness pass before you. How many of you want God's goodness in this year? Some of you are not sure. That's because you don't want His presence. If you want His presence, you cannot, you cannot escape His goodness. It just follows you. Mercy and goodness will follow me all the days of my life. Because I will dwell in the house of the Lord. I will dwell in the presence of God. Because that's where I've made my choice. So God said, you have found favor in my sight. So I want to tell you, people of God, when, when you're seeking God's presence, you can, you can sense His favor in your life. Favor is not whatever you desire. It's what you need, you will, you will find it in your life. What you need for that moment, for His presence is all sufficient for us in our lives. We know we will find what we need, the strength that we need for every day. God is not showing Moses what's going to happen in the future. What God is showing is that I will lead you. My goodness will go before you. Favor is what you will know that you need it at the right time. It's very easy when we, when we are seeking God's presence, when we are seeking His favor in our life, when we are seeking His goodness, it's very easy for you to spot and discern if there is a disturbance. So that's how we, we spot sometimes, you know, 
Guru was saying that, you know, you, there's sickness one after the other, sickness one after the other. Sometimes there's something that repeats itself. You will find that sometimes it's some kind of a problem that comes into your life. And God is trying to just remind you there's some kind of a disturbance. And we need to prioritize going back to his presence. Those are indicators in our lives. And when you, when you get to that place, you will find that favor of God coming upon you once again. For all of us, in every area of our lives, we can identify and detect those disturbances. A couple of months back, I want to tell you this. I was, I was uh, sharing this in the men's retreat with some of the friends I was talking to. I said, all of a sudden, very strangely, I, I discovered that I'm losing money. Just like that. Just like that, we were losing money. And it's all me. It's on me. I was the one. You know, suddenly we swiped the card and uh, for 3,200 and it got swiped twice. And man, this was with this, uh, this North Indian garment shop. My goodness, to make those guys understand and to try to, you know, tell them. He said this, 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 uh, this uh, company's, uh, you know, thing is in, uh, is in uh, somewhere in, uh, in North and they have to get in touch with those. And it, so it just dragged for a couple of weeks. And then... Uh, I think I was I was meddling with my phone trying to and somehow I do not know how I went in and uh, without my I think I, I I chose something on the wish card without my knowledge and it got swiped by itself thousand five hundred and then our washing machine conked off and then the uh, the geyser conked off and this uh, this motor had a problem and this guy came this uh, Holland lady told us that uh, this guy will come and inquire I inquired and gave him thousand five hundred and then I called up and said who asked you to give. I went one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. And it became very tight. And a couple of months, I realized we were not trying to even break even with all the money that we have been getting. I know something, these are the things that you can detect something is some disturbance. You can detect that. And I said, I think we need to pray. December is coming, man. If we don't have enough money, you know, so we just prayed. I just prayed, Lord, I do not know what I did with my hands. Please sanctify my hands. You know, please help me. I know somewhere I'm, I'm missing you. Somewhere I'm missing your, you know, favor. You know, this financial thing is just, just, just becoming a headache. And God reversed it. And I tell you how you, he gives you signs of how he reverses it. This month we, we accidentally discovered money in small, you know, envelopes. She found suddenly she opened an envelope in the, in the Almera and found there was 5,000 inside. And there was another envelope. There was another 2,000, 1,500 inside. You know, praise God, finally it's come back. And then you have that sense of relief, man. I know, all is well. All is well. You know, you want to make sure that you're being led by God in every decision of your life. That's, most, that's what is most important. We have all the free choices to make. I don't know where I goofed up. I'm very capable of doing all of that. You know, but one thing you know, you can, you can sense those you know, sense those disturbances and immediately you go back to God's presence and say, Lord, I'm not going to move any further without assuring, without having the assurance that you're with me. Moses made that choice. He said, I'm not going to move out of this desert. I'm not going to move out of this place unless your presence goes with me. And God said, I will. I will let all my goodness go before you. And people of God, this is the message for you this morning. As you are at the very beginning of this new year, the presence of God is your priority. If you want to experience God's goodness in your life, prioritize God. Prioritize His presence. It's a private altar. It's a private meeting place where God is expecting and longing for you to spend every day. Your decisions come out of that place. All the blessings that you have, your experience in life flows from your place of intimacy with God. It's nowhere else. It comes to that place where you come to God, where you give your, surrender your life to God, where you're desperate for God's presence. You're dependent on Him. You're telling Him you don't want to do anything without Him. It comes from that place. And then God will let all His goodness Ask before you. If God is going ahead. Moses, that's the sign you want. I'm showing you. I'm going ahead of you. All my goodness will follow you. And Moses received all that favor and that goodness which he prayed for. Right? The people of God, that's all we want for this year. That's all we want for this year. 
There are many revivals, I'll just close with this illustration, there are many revivals that happened, we all know, in the 19th century, you know, Welsh revival, Cambridge revival, Scottish revival, and as a result of all those revivals, many denominations were formed. Now you find many denominations are a result of so many revivals that happened in those, in those centuries. You know, there was one such revival, and this Church of Nazarene was one of those, you know, one of the denominations that was formed out of that revival. And, uh, and uh, it was such a powerful you know, people, when they gathered during those times in church of Nazareth, there was a such powerful presence of God was felt. And it was said that even the lost people, when they walk into the church, they will go back converted. Nobody, it was just not an accident. Nobody can just be in the church and, and just be the same. It was such a powerful presence of God. It was much like a theophany that people met God, you know, when they walked into the church. And there was a founder, this founder of the church of Nazarene was uh, Phineas uh, Brezzi. And he always preached a... Uh, and he called that the glory of God. The glory, you know, God's presence came upon people, right? And, um, and, um, and during his, uh, he was the one who was initiated that, that movement, you know. And uh, during his last days, when he, was, when he became old and, uh, you know, during his uh, last days, he went about preaching just one sermon. And the sermon title was all about keep the glory down. Keep the glory down. Because he began to realize that as it all started, the movement started in his early days, as he found it, he began to realize that it's all fading away. It's possible for people to miss God's presence. The experience, the such powerful experience that we once had, it can, uh, it can be yesterday, but we, you know, yesterday's glory can pass away. And we might be still living in yesterday's glory, not realizing that God is not present with us today. So he realized that that's what is happening to the organization. That's what is happening to his church. So during his last days, he just kept preaching one sermon everywhere he went. You know, finish his blessing. He says, keep the glory down. Let it not pass by. Keep the glory down. Keep the presence of God in your lives. Keep the presence of God in our churches. Keep the presence of God in our families. Keep the glory down. Let it not pass by. Keep the glory down. Keep his presence in our lives. That's the message I want to leave with you, people of God, this, this morning. Let's keep his presence in our lives. Let's not assume or think or take it for granted that God is with us. Remember, thinking that Jesus was in that company, they traveled on. Quiz, where is that found in the scriptures? It's a quiz for you. A question. Thinking that he was in their company, they traveled on. Ben, where is it? Oh, good. And Mary and Joseph and all the entire caravan, all of them thinking Jesus was in their company, they traveled on. Where was Jesus? They were not aware of it. They were not aware of it. Let's not think. Let's not presume. Let's not suppose. Let's not take for granted. You understand? Let's pursue God's presence with all our hearts. Let's pursue God. Because when you pursue him, in this year, you make the decision. When you pursue God, when you uncompromisingly set up that private altar in your life, it's a time with you and God. That is where your life is beginning and that's where you want to continue. It's the presence of God. Then God will let all his goodness pass before you. Amen. Let's pray. With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us, especially this year 2022 and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a glorious hand of praise.